Hi everyone, this is Jeff, and this is the first of an all-new multi-part training series on how to use modern CryEngine game art assets in 3D programs such as Blender. This series is focused on Blender, but a lot of the information can apply to other programs, such as Maya and 3ds Max. In addition, a lot of the procedures used in manipulating MWO assets also work for other CryEngine games, such as Star Citizen and Armored Warfare. So once you master these basic skills, you'll be able to apply them to other games. I'll be demonstrating against some of these assets as well, just so you can get an idea how to do it. Please be aware of all applicable copyright rules and don't steal. Thank you. All right, let's get started. You're going to need some software to be able to convert these assets. I've written a program called the CryEngine Converter. Uh, I'll show you where to get it here in a minute. Uh, you're also going to need a unzip utility. I like using 7-zip because it gives you the ability to just right click on a pack file and extract the contents. Uh, you're going to be needing to run it on a machine that has PowerShell version 3 or newer. Uh, if you're running Windows 10, you should be fine. If you're on Windows 7, you should probably upgrade to Windows 10. I'm not going to show you how to upgrade PowerShell if you want to stay on Windows 7, but uh, you can find that using a simple Google search. Optional programs include Blender uh, version 2.79 or newer. Uh, 2.79 is required for using the Mech Importer or Asset importer PowerShell scripts. Uh, they do use the new uh, one of the new nodes in, in that version. If you're going to be converting mechs for MWO, you're going to need the mech importer PowerShell script. If you're going to be just converting general assets into Blender-friendly files, you're going to need the asset importer. Also, if you're going to be converting Star Citizen files over, you're going to need either a DDS to TIFF converter or a DDS unsplit utility. I'll provide links for those as well. Star Citizen materials use a unique proprietary DDS format, uh, so it's easiest to convert them to TIFF, and if uh, you want to overwrite the files that they have, you can just uh, use this unsplit utility to, to clean them up. All right, so where do you get these tools? GitHub is where I'm hosting the uh, CGF converter. Or CryEngine Converter. So if you if you actually go to my website, hefepresents.com, uh, if you go to GitHub, uh, you'll see all three of those tools I talked about. You can go to CryEngine Converter here. You got a download button. You can look at the latest release details as well, and all the uh, README notes on how to use it. All right. So click on the download button here, or if you go to the GitHub, you can click on the download button here as well. It's under there's also under releases. You can see the previous releases here. 1.0.1 .1 is the current release, although I should be coming out with a new, uh, a few a few fixes this weekend, but we'll see. Click on download, you will have it in your downloads folder. What I like to do is to create a scripts directory uh, where you can put it, put the program. Uh, it's And then you put that scripts directory into the path. That way you can run it without having to source the entire directory every single time. So as you can see, I can put it in the D colon scripts directory. I'm not going to go over how you put a particular directory into the path. You can do a Google search on that as well. It's not required. You can always uh, type the full source directory to the converter when you when you try to extract stuff, but it's kind of a pain. It's just so much simpler to be able to put it in the path. Uh, same with putting in the additional uh, utilities out there as well. So I highly recommend it. Do a Google search, add, add the scripts directory. Now you're going to want to start PowerShell, which is a simple matter of just typing PowerShell. And you get your prompt up here. And let's open this up a little bit. And now you're going to want to make a backup copy of the game files. You don't want to actually extract them in the directory where the game is being run because you will probably break the games that you're playing. So what I'm going to do is create a directory, make your depot. This is where I'm going to keep all my files. CD depot to go into the directory and then if you... I'm actually going to create a couple subdirectories in here because I want to keep my uh, programs organized as logically as possible. So make dir mwo for MacWarrior Online and I'm also going to make dir SC for Star Citizen. I am going to copy the pack files from the MWO game directory into the MWO directory. So let's go find my games. Omicron is where it's going to be for MechWarrior Online game, and then you have all your pack files here. Uh, mechs is going to be where the all the geometry data for the MEX is going to be. So you're definitely going to want that. You're going to want to also copy over all the other ones here 
for the most part. A lot of these are map assets like buildings. You have a lot of textures and camo patterns in here as well. Objects is where most of the stuff is outside of the mechs. A lot, a lot of stuff here. So we copy these and we want to send them to depot slash mwo, paste them in here. And this is going to take a couple of minutes because you are copying 17 gigs worth of data. So I'm going to let this run and 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 we're done. Uh, here's all the pack files. The mech directory came apart separately. You can see all the, mech, all the mechs in here. It's pretty awesome. What you're going to want to do is right click on it with 7-zip. Let's not look at animations. Let's go to Caustic Valley. There's probably Caustic Valley assets in there. Right click 7-zip extract here. It's important to use the extract here feature because what it's doing is it's creating an objects directory that actually has all the files in there. You can see all the different uh, directories with the CGF files in here and LODs because when you're looking at things from far away you don't need all the geometry. So uh, this is all in our environments and our objects MWO. For the mechs you're going to want to do you're actually going to want to move these up a level. The reason they have them in that subdirectory is to make it easier for them to organize but if we we're going to just delete them out of here, paste them in here, uh, and it already has an urban mech. Eh, let's replace it. Who knows what it is. But now you have a ton of pack files in here, and mech should be empty, so let's just get rid of that. And let's take a look at the adder, 7-zip, same rules, extract here, and it should create the objects directory. Now we should see mechs, adder, and you have, the. this is the base of the adders directory. The important things in here are going to be the CDF file, which is a XML file which contains information about where all the components go. I'll explain that a little bit more in detail. Cockpit standard, which shows the has a cockpit geometry in here, uh, and the textures for it as well. It's if you're going to do an internal shot, if you're going to create art from an internal point of view of a mech, this is what you're going to want. And then under body, it will have uh, a ton of stuff in here. The material file, which tells, there's several of them, all the different materials that it uses, uh, more texture files, and a ton of CGA files that that have all the geometry information. And there's a ton of them. So that's adder, mex, objects. All right, so those are the mechs. And I showed you the environments. You're also going to want, let's see if there's other objects is usually, where's objects right here? This is a good one to extract as well. This contains all the purchable, purchasables. So if you want some good hanging medallions and things like that, we want to extract that here. And that is also going to start extracting. It's kind of a big file, so it'll take a little bit longer. And let's extract the Marauder because that is, aside from the urban mech, the best mech out there. And urban mech, which is, as mentioned earlier, the best mech. Where are you, urban mech? Seven zip extract here. And let's do the city ones as well, because they have a lot of really nice buildings. And where do they keep those? Maybe industrial? It doesn't really matter. You're going to want all these files anyway, eventually, if you want to have all, all the assets available. Like Factory's got a lot of nice assets in there as well. Right here. Music is nice. If you like the uh, Mech Warrior music that they have, it's actually really nice. And that should have created a new directory called Musics, called just music. Uh, where is, oh, textures, you're going to want all the textures as well. This is actually kind of important since there are a ton of textures that are shared among assets and this is where they keep them. You see all the cockpit ones in there as they're coming out. We'll let that keep running and I want to see if there's any more city ones. Yeah, that should be good enough. All right. Uh, let's get this out of the way. We have a, uh, actually, let me go back and show that again. 
we should have a number of directories here, objects, textures. One, one of the important things to keep in mind is this directory here, d colon backslash depot backslash mwo, for the purposes of the CryEngine Converter program, this is called the object directory. Uh, it's simply where the objects directory is because it tells you, it, it helps it figure out where the materials are for any given asset. If you don't specify the objects directory, you can occasionally have problems with the converter, so you generally want to do that. So keep in mind what this is. You're going to be typing in a lot. So let's uh, get to converting. All right. I've already mentioned that I have a scripts directory. This is where you're going to really want uh, PowerShell because the program is meant to be run through PowerShell. And let's see, where's the CGF converters right here? Very good. Depot slash MWO. Now let us start with a very simple uh, file. We're gonna go to objects, where again, all the objects are. You should see, uh, this should look familiar from what we took out. If we go to, let's, let's do one of the hanging medallions. Let's go to purchase. And then we go to, whoopsie, cockpit hanging. You can see all the different, different ones out here. And let's go to, see, I'm going to use tab complete. We're going to get the Russell medallion Essel hog. I think they might be missing a letter there. Uh, and if you look in here, you can see all the different files in here. CDF are going to is going to be, I'm sorry, CHR is going to be is going to have ge geometry and armatures in it. These are really kind of fun files to work with. Uh, you can see you have an A, a B version. You can see the DDN, which is the normal map, diffuse map. I'm not sure what GSP is, but well, it might be. I'm not sure what it is. We'll take a look. Anyway, the way you run it is very simply. Uh, and this is assuming that you have it in the path. If you don't have it in a path, every time I type cgf-converter.exe, you're going to have to type in the path to it slash cgf-converter. All right, so with uh, since we want to just convert the medallion, we do cgf-converter.exe, uh, medallion, and we want the chr file because that's one has a geometry, and then there are some options we want to do. Uh, d by default, it will extract to Colada. If you want waveform, I don't recommend it. It's a much more primitive format, and uh, the materials don't come off as well. You can specify that, but generally you want DA, but that's by default, so you don't need it. The other thing you can do is specify the graphic, the, the texture format. By default, it just does DDS. If you want to tell the material files to use TIFF instead, you actually have to convert all the DDS files to TIFFs if you're going to do that. But since we're using Blender and this is MWO and not Star Citizen, we can just use the default DDS. And then you always want to do the object directory. Objector d colon slash depot slash MWO. And then you hit enter and it will convert it. Now what you're going to see here is a DAE file. All right, and that is going to be the Colada version of this right here. And, well, yeah, let's open up Blender and take a look at this thing. So move it over here. Uh, this is not the default view for Blender. Let's see if we can go back to what it looks like by default. Actually, I think we just do default. Here we go. When you open up Blender by default, this is 279, as you can see, which I said is required if you're using Blender. This is the timeline down here. You can minimize and maximize it. Uh, for this one, you don't need to worry about this, but when we get into the max, you're going to have to really start working on that. So you're going to want to do file, import, colada, and then you're going to want to go to d depot, mwo, objects, purchasable, hanging, and we did wrestle hag. Right? And then you select a DA file. If you're doing a CHR or an armature or a skin or anything like that, you're going to want to select find bone chains and auto connect. It'll make it look a, look a lot easier. Um, you should probably just have those always selected by default anyway. And you click import. And if we get in close, you should see a medallion, right? Is that a medallion? It sure does. 
And this part right here is the armature. You can control tab to get into pose mode. Um, you can kind of rotate them around. It's kind of fun, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, as you can see, this looks kind of like where's all the graphics? You need to turn it on to material mode. And well, now it turned all black. So let's go and set some lighting in our scene. Go to the scene tab here. You go to oh, this is in Blender. That's problem or uh, Blender render. We want to go to cycles. Uh, I take it back. Let's stick with Blender for now. Go to the world, turn on ambient occlusion, environmental lighting, and that looks a lot better already. We take a look from the camera, hit number pad zero, and then you can. I'm not going to go too much into how to how to do Blender because it's it's complicated and way beyond the scope of this tutorial. But you can kind of see it right here. We change this to rendered mode. It kind of shows you, and that's that's not bad. It's kind of what it's supposed to be like, but it probably doesn't have the normal maps because nor, uh, Blender can't import the collot of normals very well. So let's close that and go back to material mode. And then we select the object. Let's take a look at the materials. And it, this is a simple object. It only has one material. Uh, and if you click on this, it's going to talk about the textures. You can see this is the diffuse. It doesn't give the name for them, but that's what it is. And here, this is the GSP. And what it didn't import is, this is probably specular or a combination of specular and some other stuff. So what you want to do, since it's specular, yeah, it identified as specular. If, if you look at the uh, other one, it should be listed as diffuse, the color, basically. But it didn't add a third one, which is going to be the normal map, which is really important. Uh, Actually, let's do one more thing. A lot of times this image doesn't come off very clear or you don't see it all. You want to uncheck this use alpha. The alpha channel is frequently used in uh, CryEngine games for other parts of textures, like sometimes illumination or other stuff. But anyway, so we want to uncheck that. It's not really visible here. It's uh, But this one, we're going to want to add the DDN, right, which is the normal map. And as you can see, that's not quite what we're looking for, but that is because by default it adds it as diffuse. So you uncheck that, check out, check out normal, and now it should be significantly better. It's not easy to see here, but maybe if we go to zero and we render this again, I'm going to hit F12 to render. That's not bad. That is basically your asset. Uh, since it is a CHR, you do have uh, armatures, so you can make it wave in the air like you just don't care. Right? Look at that. Pretty pretty fun stuff. So if you want to start doing animations, you can do that as well. GR undo all that. Okay, so there you have something very simple. Alright, that should wrap it up for this first tutorial. The next one is going to be how to use Asset Importer to import a bunch of assets all at once, an entire directory, or even more if you want to get into some fancy PowerShell scripting. Uh, the advantages of using it that way is it lets you use the Cycles renderer as opposed to the Blender internal renderer, so you can get much more realistic looking materials. Uh, after that one is done, I'll work on another one on how to actually do the mechs, so you can see these fancy uh, mechs like this and get that, those uh, rigged up and ready for animation as well. After that, we'll see what else we can do with this. Probably do some basic animations with, uh, with these assets. Alright, thanks for watching.